Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to talk about Niagara and creating a basic rain ambient effect in Unreal 4. Now, for this video, we're just going to talk about the raindrops. So, to get this started, I'm going to right click in my content browser and I'm going to create a Niagara emitter from an empty blank template. And then we'll give it a name, NE, whatever you want to call it. And now let's go and open this up. So like usual, the first thing we want to do is spawn something. So in emitter update, we're going to add a spawn rate and the spawn rate is going to be 300 for now. And we'll just save this and let it compile. And now we can see that we're spawning something, but they're all spawning on top of each other. And what I want is for these to spawn in a bigger location. So in particle spawn, I'm going to look for a box location. And for the box size in the X, this is going to be 1,500. For the Y, this is going to be 1,500. And the Z, we're going to leave that at 100. Because we don't want these particles to spawn in front of us. We want them to spawn in the sky and rain down on us. So let's take a look here. We have our particles spawning in this box, but our particles are a little big. And they don't really look like those rain streaks like we expect. So in initialize particle, I'm going to change the sprite size mode to be uniform and I'm going to set this to one. Now, once again, these aren't going to look like rain streaks yet. And that's because I want to handle this in a different way. I want them to scale based on speed. So in particle update, I'm going to look for scale and all the way down here, you should see scale sprite size by speed. And now when we add that, we're going to get an error because it's looking for saw forces and velocity. So once we click on fixed issue, you'll see that soft forces and velocity appears above scale sprite size. And that's because scale sprite size is reading from soft forces and velocity. Now these values, I'm not gonna adjust them yet because we don't even have any motion, right? We need to have some sort of velocity to even scale these in the first place. So under particle update, I'm gonna look for a gravity force. And once again, we're going to get that error because it's looking for soft forces and velocity. So I'm going to take gravity force and I'm going to put it above soft forces and velocity. Now the values in here, you'll notice that Z is set to negative 980 representing gravity, but I want to randomize that value. So I'm going to break this vector and in the Z, I'm going to randomize the range float. And in the minimum, I'll set this to be negative 300. And in the maximum, I'll set this to be negative 980. That way we're getting a variance of gravity. And now if we let this play, we should see that our little specks are falling, but they're not scaling yet. So back in our scale sprite size, we're gonna take a look at the X first. So for the min, I'm gonna set this to be 0.7. And the X, I'll do 1.15. And now for the Y, the min, we're gonna keep it at one, and then for the max, we're going to set this to be 45. And now we should start to get these streaks. But let's go and take a look at what we have so far. So I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to right click on my emitter and I'm going to create a Niagara system. And we'll just name it correctly. So it says NS for good naming conventions. And then let's go and pull this out into the world. But let's go and pull this up into the sky. And we'll hit G on the keyboard. So we can see what's going on. And this, this isn't too bad. This is all right. But one thing you'll notice is if we rotate up and we look at our rain, you'll notice that these aren't behaving how we would expect. They're billboarding towards the camera and we don't want that. So if we come back to our emitter, we want to take a look at our sprite render. And in here under alignment, click on this drop down, you'll see velocity aligned. And now if we save this and go take a look, now they're behaving how we would expect. Once again, this doesn't look too bad, but there's still some adjustments I'd like to make. So back in our emitter, we're gonna take a look at randomizing our color. So in initialize particle under color mode, we're gonna change this to be a random range. And now for the color minimum, we're gonna keep this pretty dark, but we're gonna pull this value up just a little bit, just a little bit there. And then for the color maximum, we're actually going to pull this way down to about 75%. And then we'll give it just a little bit of color, just a little bit of blue, and then we'll hit OK. After we've done that, 
We also want to adjust the alpha in here. And I want to set these to be 0 0.8 in the minimum and 0 0.8 in the maximum. And there's one more color adjustment I'd like to do to give this even more variance. And that's going to be in particle update. So we're going to look for scale color. And now in the scale alpha, we're going to change this into a curve, float from curve. And I'm going to add a few keys here. So I'll add a key here and a key here. And we want these two keys to be about the same so they can stay that value. But our first key and our last key are going to be set to zero so that our particles are fading in and fading out. And then we'll just select all of our keys and we'll smooth them out with auto. And we'll just adjust some of these handles. They're a little closer and they're not bumping out. And now the last thing to do here is in the scale RGB, I'm gonna change this into a float so it's all uniform. And then this value, I'm gonna change into a random range float. This way we can get different intensities of our initial color. So the minimum is gonna be 0 0.3 and the maximum is gonna be one. So let's save this and we'll go and take a look. And this is looking pretty good. So from here, you can go and adjust this in any way that you want. Maybe you want more rain. Maybe you want it to move faster. Or maybe you want to find a way to incorporate a wind system. But if you guys thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks, guys.